can we start yes sir okay so regarding the lab which one i have already up uploaded in the google classroom okay so we are going to conduct the lab quiz one on 31st of december at 5 pm okay the total exam timing is 30 minutes okay and totally we will get the multiple choice question or short answer multiple choice question or short answer so most of the questions are multiple choice but you will also get some question where you will get, give the answer where you will directly write the answer so what is the output of this program so directly will write the answer directly will write the answer okay so the exam will start from 5 o'clock 5 pm and it will go up to 5:30 okay in the worst case we are going to accept the response up to 5:32 okay we will give you the extra 2 minute in the worst scenario in the worst scenario we will get the extra 2 minute but after that we will not get any extra minute okay and also there is no any makeup policy for the lab quiz exam so we are going to conduct the three different quiz exam three different lab quiz exam and we will consider the best two out of three best two out of three okay the total number of question we are planning 15 the total marks you will get 30 total marks you will get 30 and there are 30 different sets of questions are there so you cannot do like that so whatever the, your friend is writing will write the same like that then in this case you will get the zero marks okay because all the question most of the questions are totally different most of the questions are totally different okay most of the questions are totally different okay next if we are going to find or if any instructor or any ta is going to find any student is doing the cheating then in this case you will go for the semester back you will go for the semester back without any reason you will go for the semester back means on all the subject you will get the nc grade in all the subject you will get the nc grade if you are doing any types of cheating in the exam okay during the exam Sir, this share a... your camera during the exam is each instructor is going to handle 50 to 60 students same for the mid sem exam also so in the mid sem exam each instructor is going to handle the 30 students so during the exam your camera is on okay so you cannot say like that my internet is not working like is not working something like that we are not going to handle this type of script okay so if you are not giving this directly you will get the zero marks and there is no any makeup policy for the lab which exam one there is no any makeup policy for the lab which exam one okay sir will there be a google meet or on uh, we will be on the microsoft team no google meet google meet okay so mail regarding that will come yeah google yes it is a open book exam open book exam means you can only use your notebook you can only use your notebook apart from that you cannot use anything you can only use your notebook okay you cannot use any type of compiler you cannot use any type of compiler okay so you cannot use any type of compiler you can only use your class notebook class notebook even you cannot use your book you can only use the class notebook not no slide no slides okay only the class notebook only the class notebook textbook you cannot use any type of textbook only the class hard notebook no number system is not there number system is not there in the syllabus that's why i have already mentioned number system is not there what we have already covered in the lab that is there so whatever the topic if else a statement while loop while loop means very few questions will come from the while loop and the conditional operator and then printf and a scanf function so these are the topic we have already covered in the lab section okay normally we are going to use the google form google form okay but there are different sets of the questions are there different set set a set b set c set d something like that set z is also there okay sir we can use pdf of the book no pdf is not allowed i have already mentioned only the hard copy notebook is allowed okay even in this the campus exam also campus combre exam or if you are going for the mid sem exam we are not going to allow any type of soft copy only the hard copy only the hard copy if you are going to use the textbook hard copy of the textbook that is also fine
So, but many didn't receive their textbook which they ordered. Sir. So, can are they allowed to use the PDF format of the textbook? No, PDF form, format you cannot use. PDF format you cannot use. You can only use the hard copy. You can only use the hard copy. Sir, of book? Yeah, you can use the hard, hard copy of the book or you can use the hard notebook. That is also fine. Okay, sir. Sir? Yes. Sir? Uh, sir, you gave us uh, uh, some Google, uh, some five to six questions uh, uh, at the end of each class. So, sir, we can practice them again for... Your voice is not coming. Uh, sir, you gave us five to six questions at the end of each class. So, sir, can we practice that questions again? Yeah, yeah. So, just a similar types of questions will come. Okay, sir. Okay. Fine. Okay, so in the previous class, we have already completed the go to a statement, go to a statement, and these are some, these are some mistakes when you are writing the program. So as for example, when you are writing the else part, we cannot write the semicolon, because if you are writing the semicolon that we have already checked, if you are writing here semicolon, or if you are writing here semicolon, means there is no any statement will come inside the else part. So as for example, if you are writing if number mod dot 2 not equal to 0 and here you are writing the semicolon means there is no any statement will come inside the if part. Okay. So in this case, it may be possible like that you will get the syntax error. You will get the syntax error because you cannot write the else part without if statement. You cannot write the else part without if statement. Same like that when you are writing the program, clearly you have to mention like that. So as for example, here you can see here there is one confusion is coming means based on this program when we are going to look this program then what we are getting like that these two statements are coming inside the else part these two statements are coming inside this else part that is called the x equal to b and x into equal to 4 okay but actually if you are not using the braces then only one statement will come inside the else part if you are going to write more than one statement then proper you can use the braces if you are not using the braces in this case what is the problem only one statement will come inside this else part means if this condition is true it will execute this statement this statement and this statement if the condition is false then in this case it will execute this statement and this statement means this statement is always executed either the condition is false or true but when you are writing like that then in this case what is the problem there is no any problem with the compiler but when you are going to check this program then in this case basically what types of problem we are getting we are getting one problem like that so here we are getting like that these two statements are coming inside the else part but this is not true okay now anyone can you tell me what do you mean by x into equal to 4 anyone what do you mean by x into equal to 4. What do we mean so by that? X equal to x into x into 4. X equal to x into 4. Simply we will write x equal to x into 4. Okay. So when you are writing the program, carefully you will check whether the semicolon is there or not. If the semicolon is there, then there is no any statement inside the if and else part. Okay. So these are the basic part. Now we are going to start one most important topic that is called the loop. Okay. And that is very, very important topic. Okay. So now you can see, so as for example, if someone will ask you to print bits, someone will ask you to print bits two times. Then in this case, simply we have to write the two time printf statement. That is fine. But if the someone will ask you to print bits 100 times, or every one second you have to print this bits value. After every one second, you have to print this types of bits value. I mean, simply you have to print bits or welcome to bits, welcome to bits, welcome to bits, something like that. Regularly, you have to print. Means regularly, you have to perform the similar types of operation. Then in this case, basically, we are suggested to use loop. Okay. So if you are doing the similar types of operation every time, then in this case, we are recommending to use the loop okay and there are three different way to implement the loop in C there are three different way to implement the loop in C one is called the while loop while second one is called the do while loop and third one is called the for loop okay so these are the three different types of 
syntax where you can use for the loop loop means when you are doing the similar types of operation more than one time then in this case later you will go for the loop so as for example now try to understand as for example someone will ask you to print table of means we are asking the user to enter any number any decimal number and after that we are printing the table value so 8 into 8 8 into 2 8 into 3 8 into 4 dot dot 8 into 10 if the user is going to enter 8 so here you can see we are doing the same operation we are doing the similar types of operation in all the time we are doing the multiplication only we are changing this value only we are changing this value and we will go up to 10 times we are doing the similar types of operation same like that if someone will ask you to find the maximum of 10 number maximum of 10 number then in this case how to find first we will take one number then we will check the maximum value if this number is greater than maximum then we have to update again we will go for the second number third number fourth number fifth sixth seven eight nine eight so we are doing the similar types of operation when you are doing the similar types of operation means you can think like that here we can go for the loop okay so if you are getting any types of question or any types of requirement where you are going to assume like that we are doing the same process more than one time then in, in this case instead of writing the hard code you have to use the while loop or you have to use the do while loop or you have to use the for loop okay so now we will discuss the syntax one by one how we are going to use this while loop to perform more than one operation how we are going to use do while loop and how we are going to use the for okay and this is very very important topic you can consider as the most important topic okay so in the while loop basically what we are writing first we are going to initialize the variable means whatever the variable you are going to use for the expression so as for example now assume that we are going to use the variable i so we are writing here i equal to zero and then we are using one keyword while while and here basically we are writing the expression in terms of i expression in terms of i okay so basically we are writing the expression in the terms of i after that we are writing the set of statements okay and then we are updating the value of i okay and braces close just try to understand what i am saying like that first we'll take first we'll whatever the variable you are going to use for the expression first you have to declare this variable and define this variable First, whatever the variable you are going to use for the expression, you have to declare this variable and also you have to define this variable. Okay. After that, you will write the statement. So here is the same problem like that, the if statement. So as for example, if you are writing while expression semicolon, while expression statement one, statement two, statement three. And third, you are writing Y braces and here you are writing the statements. In this case, if you are writing the semicolon here, there is no any statement will come inside this while loop. Okay, there is no any statement will come inside this while loop when you are writing Y expression. And after that, if you are writing the semicolon, means there is no any statement will come inside the while loop. Same like that, if you are writing the statement one, statement two, statement three, and here if you are not writing the semicolon, only one statement will come inside the while loop. Only one statement will come inside the while loop that is called the statement one a statement two and a statement three will not come inside the while loop when you are writing this types of expression means when you are writing the braces means all the statement will come inside the while loop all the statement will come inside the while loop so as for example now try to understand that for example if you are writing here try to understand int i equal to 10 okay we are writing int i equal to 10 while i minus minus and here we are writing printf i and then again we are writing printf i okay first expression second if we are writing while i minus minus semicolon printf i and then we are writing printf i third one you are writing while i minus minus and bracket we are writing printf i and then we are writing printf now you can see what is the output we get. 
So in this case, first we have to check whether we are going to use any type of semicolon after the while statement or not. So here basically we are not using the any type of semicolon. Okay. What do you mean by that? First it will check this expression. Try to understand. Here we are writing tape. First it will check this expression. And if this expression is true, try to understand. If this expression is true, then it will execute all the statement, whatever you have written inside this while loop. Okay. So here you can see here we are not using any type of brasses, which only one statement will come inside the while loop. Only one statement will come inside the while loop. Okay. So now you can see, so first we are writing i equal to 10. Can you tell me what is the value of this expression i minus minus? What is the value of this expression? The value of this expression is 10, but after that the value of i become 9. After that the value of i become 9. Now can you tell me 9 is considered a true statement or false statement? Can you tell me 9 is considered as a true statement or false statement? So 9 is considered a true statement because we are getting the non-zero value. And if you are getting the non-zero value, that will consider as a true statement. That is will consider as a true statement. And if it is true, then it will execute all the statement inside the while loop. But here we are not using the brasses means only one statement will come inside the while loop. And it will print the current value of i. What is the current value of i? 9. It will print to the 9. And again, it will go to this expression. Again, it will check this expression whether the expression is true or false. Now, can you tell me what is the value of this expression i minus minus? What is the value of this expression? Anyone? What is the value of this expression i minus minus? The value of this expression become 9. But after that, this value become 8. Okay. So again, it will print the value 8. Same like that. Now assume that this value become 1. Okay. Now assume that this i value become 1. After that, if you are writing i minus minus, what is the value of this expression? 1. But after that, this value become 0. Now after that, what value we are printing? 0. Now we have to check i minus minus what is the value of this expression anyone try to understand what is the value of this expression zero minus minus what is the value of this expression zero but after that this value become minus one after that the value become minus one if this value is coming zero zero is considered true or false statement that is considered as a false statement okay so zero is a false statement and if you are going getting false statement automatically it will come out from the while loop and it will start executing this value what value it will print minus one it will print minus one so output you will get nine eight seven six five four three two one zero and minus one also you will get minus one now, second case, you will see, second case, we are not writing any statement inside this while loop. Just you can see, we are using here semicolon means there is no any statement inside the while loop. And again, now we that we are writing i equal to 10. Okay. So, first it will check what is the value of this expression 10. Condition is true. Now, it will go for the 9. 9, again, the condition is true. It will go for the 8. 8, again, the condition is true. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Now we assume that the value of i become 1 because always we are reducing the value of y by 1. Okay. Now we can see when we are writing here i minus minus. Okay. What is the when the value of i become 1? What is the value of this expression 1? 1 is considered a true statement. So after that, this value becomes 0. What is the value of this expression? 0. 0 is considered as false statement, but when it will come out from the y loop, this one becomes minus 1. One, okay, so it will print you the value minus one and minus one. It will print you the value minus one and minus one. Okay, no, what I am saying like that, try to understand. I minus minus, there are two things. What is the value of this expression and what is the value of I after executing this expression? Try to understand. So when the value of I become zero, try to understand what the value of I become zero, what is the value of this expression? Anyone? What is the value of this expression when the value of I become zero? What is the value of this expression? I minus minus zero. Okay. But after executing this expression, what is the value of I? Can you tell me what is the value of I after executing this expression? I minus minus when the value of I become zero. Okay. So in this case, definitely this value become minus minus. What? Okay. Definitely this value become minus. Now in this case, what value it will print? Third one. Third one at least you will try what value it will print. What value it will print? 
What value it will print? Anyone? What value it will print? So, uh, in, the 10, 10, 9, 9, 8, 8. Yeah. So, in this case, what value it will start from? 9, 9. 9, 9, and up to it will go for the 0, 0. It will not print minus 1 and minus 1. It will not print minus 1 and minus 1. It will go up to 0, 0. Because when you are coming out from the loop, then you are getting the value of i equal to minus 1. Even it will not print the value equal to 9. Even it will not print the value equal to 10. 10. It will not print the value equal to 10. Now, next one, at least we'll try. I'm going to check how many students are getting the concept. So, that minus 1, uh, why it will not print? Now, can you tell me what value it will print? Anyone? Anyone? So what value it will print? It will go to the infinite loop. Why it will go to the infinite loop? Because first we are writing the i minus minus. What is the value of this expression? 2, 2 is considered a true statement. But after that, this value become 1. Again, we are writing i plus plus, i plus plus. What value it will become? i plus plus means this value become again a 2. So here you can see we are not updating the value. Time. Always we are getting the same value. And if we are getting the same value always, then in this case, clearly we will mention it will go to the infinite loop. It will go to the infinite loop because we are writing the while i minus minus, i plus plus colon and then we are writing printf i it will go to the infinite loop it will go to the infinite loop okay so now you can see in the while loop what we are going to do just you can see this is a very important point just we will clearly write so in while loop what we are writing here while then we are writing here expression okay and after that here we are writing the set of statements okay now, in the while loop, first we are going to check if the expression equal to true. If the expression equal to true, it will execute all the statement. And after that, again, we will go and we will check the expression. Again, if the expression is true, again, it will execute this statements. Okay. So, continuously, it will execute all the statement until this expression is true. When the expression become false, then in this case, automatically, it will come out from the loop. Automatically, it will come out from the loop. Now, can you tell me what is the minimum number of time? What is the minimum number of time this statement will execute if you are using the while loop? What is the minimum number of time this statement will execute if you are getting the, if you are using the while loop? What is the minimum number of time? It will go minimum zero time. It will go minimum zero time. Okay. So minimum number of time, it will go zero times. Okay. Now second one, just this one is the similar to the do while loop. Just you can see we are writing the do and then we are writing the statement one. Then we are writing a statement two. And after that here we are writing while and here we are writing the condition. We are writing the condition. Try to understand. Try to understand. That we will discuss. That we will discuss. After the 9.45 we will discuss. When we are writing i equal to 1, what output we will get. We will also get the infinite loop. Okay. Now, in, in this case, just you can see what we are writing, we are writing the do and while. These are the keywords. So, we can write like that. So, in this case, in this case, in the while loop, what we are going to do? First, we are checking the expression. If the expression is true, then we are executing all the statement. But in the do while loop, first we are executing the statements. First, we are executing the statement and then we are checking the condition. So, same like that. Now, assume that there are two different types of restaurants are there. Restaurant number one and restaurant number two. In the restaurant number one, if you are going to order any food, first you have to pay the bill and take the token and then you have to submit the token, you will get the food. This 
this is called the restaurant number one. I mean, restaurant number one means first you have to pay the bill, you have to take the token, and after that, when you are going to submit the token, you will get the food. But in the second restaurant, first you have to order the food, and after that, you have to pay the bill. First you have to order the food, and after that, you have to pay the bill. Okay. Again, if you are going to order the second time, first you have to order the food, and after that, you have to pay the bill. Okay. Now try to understand. If we now try to understand in the case of while loop and this one, you just to assume like that this is a restaurant one and this is a restaurant two. Okay, restaurant two means first we are going to order the food, after that, we are paying the bill. Restaurant one, one means first we are paying the bill, then we are getting the food. Okay, now assume that if you have no any money in your wallet, if you have no any amount, okay, or by some mistake, you already forget your wallet, okay, something like that. In this case, in this case, can you tell me in which restaurant you will get the food? Okay. In this case, in which restaurant you will get at least one plate food or something like that. In which restaurant will get restaurant number two? Because in the restaurant number two, first we are going to give the order and after that we are paying the bill. But in the restaurant number one, you have no any chances to get the food if you have no money. If you have no money, you have no any chances to get the food. Same like that here. Also, if the first expression is false, then in this case, it will not execute any one of the statements. Means in this case, minimum you will get zero time this statement will execute it but if you are using the do while loop then at least one at time this statement will execute it after that we are going to check the condition because first we are executing all the statement then we are checking the condition if the condition is true again we are going to execute the statement again we are checking the condition so in this case you will get at least one at time you will get at least one at time you will get this a statement will execute it at least one at time this statement will execute it now this is the main difference between while loop and do while loop okay now assume that where we can use this while loop and do while loop now we are taking one requirement now assume that if you are going to if someone will ask you to write one program to find summation of all the number try to understand to find summation of all the number To find the summation of all the numbers means what do you mean by that? The user is going to enter any decimal number 5, 6, 7, 8, and then you have to print what is the summation of this number 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8 using the while loop or using the do while loop. Okay. So now you can see what operation we are going to do. Just you can see we are asking the user to enter one simple decimal number 5674 or any number and after that we are printing 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 4 something like that. Okay. After that we are printing this value. Okay. Now you can see if someone will ask you the same operation how to perform. First we are taking 5. Now we are getting 6, 7, Four, something like that or you can also perform like that five six seven four first we are taking four now we are going to check if there any number is there yes now again we are taking the leftmost means this one uh, rightmost seven again we have to check whether the numbers are there yes there then we are going to take six then we are going to take five when we have taken five after that there is no any numbers are there try to understand after that there is no any numbers are there then in this case basically what we can do we will stop we will stop and it will print you some value what is the summation of this value. okay now in this case just you can see how to perform this operation how to perform how to execute this expression okay now, can you tell me how to find this last value? Anyone, if any expressions, any decimal values are given, how to find the what is the last number is there? What is the last number is there? Anyone, what is the last number is there? N modular division 10. So, if you are writing here N modular division 10, you will get the value 4. And after that, how to remove this value 4? Anyone, how to remove this value 4? We will write N divided by 10. If you are writing, then we are going to remove this value. Four. Okay, so just you can see five six seven four. Now, what is the value of five six seven four modular division ten? Anyone? What is the value will get? Anyone? What is the value will get? Five six seven four modular division ten. What is the value will get? Four. And if you are writing five six seven four divided by ten, what value will get? 
five, six, seven. You will get five, six, seven if you are writing divided by t. So now you can see how to write this expression. Just you can see. Okay, so now you can see what we are writing. We are asking the user to enter one number. First, we are asking the user to enter one number. So we have to take this in and then we are asking the user. So scan F, percentile D, and of A. Okay. Now we are going to check whether the user has entered zero because we are asking to enter only the positive number. We are not working for the negative number. Try to understand. We are only working for the positive number. Okay. Then in this case, we have to check whether the value y a is greater than equal to zero. Okay. Or only we will write greater than. If the value of a is greater than zero, then in this case, basically we will go for the summation because I have already mentioned we are working for only positive number. We are working for only positive number. So in this case, what we have mentioned like that, while a is greater than zero. Okay. If the value of a greater than zero, then we will go for the summation. Otherwise, there is no need to go for the summation. Otherwise, there is no need to go for the summation. Okay, so that's why we are writing while this one. Now, before that, we have to need one variable that is used to store the sum values. We are writing in sum equal to zero, and then we are writing sum equal to sum of plus n modular division t. Okay, so when you are writing n modular division t, basically what value it will return? It will return the rightmost. Digit. What is the rightmost single digit? It will return this value. And after that, we have to update this value. We are going to remove that rightmost digit. Simply, we have to write in divided by t. And finally, when we are coming out from the loop, you have to print the value. Print f percentile d. You are going to print the value sum. Just you can see this program will work. So we are going to enter 1, 2, 3. It is printing the value 3 plus 2 plus 1. So just you can see what we are going to do here. First, we are writing one expression. If this expression is true, it will execute all the statement. Whatever the statement you are going to write here, it will execute all the statement because we are using the braces. If you are not using the braces, then in this case, only one statement will come inside this while loop. And in this case, it will go to the infinite loop if we are not writing this statement inside the while loop because we are not updating the value of n. And if we are not updating the value of n, definitely it will go to the infinite loop. But here you can see we are updating the value of n. And after that, when the value of n becomes zero, then in this case, in this case, it will go to the infinite loop. Okay. Now, next one, one student is asking how to write the same program using the do while loop. How to write the same program using the do while loop? Yes, this will happen till n equal to 0. Okay, so now we are going to check how to write the same program do. Then we'll write inside that we are going to check the condition. Okay, so inside that we are writing sum equal to sum of plus n modular division x sum equal to sum of plus n modular division 10 and after that we are going to check here you can see first we are checking the condition whether the value of n greater than 0 or not but in this case first we are adding the value and after that we are checking the condition so now we have to write while n while n greater than 0 if this condition is true and here we are writing n equal to n divided by just you can see. So what we are writing do sum equal to sum plus n modular division 10 and then we are writing a equal to n divided by 10 and again we are checking whether the value of a whatever the value we are getting here that is greater than that is greater than this value or not. If it is coming greater than this one then in this case we have to stop. So now we are going to check whether it is working or not. 1, 2, 3. So it is working just you can see it is giving six okay same like that if you are working for the negative number then you have to simply check if n greater than zero if n greater than zero then in this case we have to return n otherwise we have to return minus one into n 
just you can see this one will work for the all positive as well as negative number so just you can see if the value of n greater than 0 means we are getting the positive number and if the value of n is smaller than 0 then in this case we are getting the negative number this one will work for both positive as well as negative so minus 1 2 3 okay so there is something problem which coming now we have to write minus 1 2 3 so okay here we are equal to this now you can see it will work minus one two three just you can see it is working fine what we have done only we have converted the negative number to positive number only we have converted the negative number to positive number and after that it is working fine after that it is working fine so just you can see this is the major difference between the while loop and do while loop in the while loop what we are going to do just you can see in the while loop first we are checking the condition and after that we are doing the operation but in the do while loop first we are doing the operation then after that we are checking the condition so this is the major difference between while loop and do while loop so same like that just you can see this is also called the pre-test when you are using the while loop this is also called the pre-test this is also called the pre-test okay so first we are checking the energy if you have the sufficient energy then you will go for one more round again you are coming for one more round then you are going to check we have the sufficient energy or not again if you have the sufficient energy then again we have to go for the one more round but in this case first we are taking the round then after that we are checking the energy but in this case first before going for the round first we are checking the energy and then we are going for the round this is the major difference between while loop and do while Look, this is the major difference between while loop and do while loop. Clear? While loop and do while loop. Okay, so now I am going to check with us. Yeah, so can you tell me what is the output you will get for this question? Anyone? What is the output you will get? Anyone? Yes, in the do while loop, after execution of the statement, then we are checking the condition. That is called the do while loop. But in the while loop, before going to the uh, a statement we are checking the condition that is called the while loop that's i have already given the example restaurant example while loop means first you have to pay the money and you will take the ticket that is called the while loop uh, uh, second one do while loop means first you will take the food after that you will pay the money that is called the do while loop in this case, can you tell me what is the answer you will get? We are writing i divided by j greater than 0 0.01. Then in this case, it will execute this statement. Anyone can you tell me what is the answer you will get? Okay, so all are saying 1, 1, 1. Okay, how you are saying 1, 1, 1? Okay, so now you can see we are going to check with what is the output we will get. Okay, just you can see. So first, we'll create the three different types of box. Just you can see that will help you. So now you can see we are taking three different variables. One is called the i. And what is the value of i? Two. Second one, your j. What is the value of j? One. And then we are writing some, some value is coming zero. Now we will check the condition. While i divided by j. What is the value of i? One by two, you will get zero point. What is the value we will get? Sorry, 2 by 1, you will get 2 because the value of i is 2 and the value of j is 1. You will get 2 by 1, you will get 2 condition is true. Then we are writing j equal to j plus j. j equal to j plus j means this value become 2. And after that, we are writing sum equal to sum plus i divided by j. So what is the current value of sum? 0 plus. What is the current value of i? 2 divided by 2, you will get 1. So this value become 1. Okay. Now, after that, again, we are coming to this condition. i divided by j. Now, what is the value of i? 2, 2 divided by 2. Condition is true. Then again, we are writing j equal to j plus 2. Means j equal to j plus j, you will get the value equal to 4. When you are getting the value equal to 4, what is the sum value we will get? 1 plus 2 divided by 4. 1 plus 2 divided by 4. Again, we will check the condition. 2 divided by 4. What is the value we will get? 0 0.5. You will get 0 0.5. When you are writing 2 divided by 4, you will get 0 0.5. Again, 0 0.5 greater than 0 0.01. Condition is true. This value become 8. And here you will get 2 by 8. Again, we will write 2 by 8. Can you tell me what is the value of 2 by 8? Anyone? 
2 by 8 anyone what is the value of 2 by 8 0.125 can we write 2 by 8 is nothing but equal to 0 0.25 or 0 0.125 anyone what is the value of 2 by 8 2 by 8 yes 0, 2 by 8 you will get 1 by 4 0 0.25 yes right 0 0.25 if this value is 0 0.25 again the condition is true so again we have to execute this expression this one becomes 16 so we'll write 2 by 16 again 2 by 16 anyone what is the value of 2 by 16 1 by 8 what is the value of 1 by 8 0 0.125 again the condition is true again we'll go for 2 by 30 2. Again, you will tell me what is the value of 2 by 32? Anyone? 2 by 32. What is the value of 2 by 32? Anyone? 2 by 32. Anyone? What is the value of 2 by 32? 0 0.0625. 0 0.0625. It will go to the 0 0.0625. Again, you will go for 2 by 64. What is the value of 2 by 64? Anyone? 2, 2 by 64. 0. 03. So again, it will go for 2 by 128. Again, we have to check what is the value of 2 by 128. So I think it will come 0 0.12 something. So it will go 2 by 256. So we have to find what is the summation of this number. What is the summation of this number? Okay. So we will continue this process until the condition is true. When the condition becomes false, we will come out from the while loop. We will come out from the while loop. And you know the procedure. This is the procedure we will follow. This is the procedure we will follow. Okay, clear? This is the procedure we are going to follow to find the value. Okay. Clear? So any doubt in while loop and do while loop. Okay, next again, one more question I'm going to write by using the while loop. Just you can see. We are asking the user, try to understand, we are asking the user to enter the value, okay? Means the user will enter decimal number until the user is going to enter zero. We will not stop, we will continue this process. Try to understand what I am saying like that. We are asking the user to enter in a number and we have no any idea about the value of it. Whether the user is going to enter 2 number, 3 number, 4 number, 5 number, 6 number or the user can also enter 100 number, 1000, 5000, 10,000, 20,000, any number can enter. But how to know when the user is going to enter stop, when the user is going to enter any zero, then we will assume like that the user is now interested to stop and they are interested to find the value. What value will return? You have to find what is the value of summation of the number and also the average of the number. So as for example, if the user has entered 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3 and after that the user has entered 0, what is the summation of the number? 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3 means what is the summation of the number? 1 plus 2 plus 3, you will get 6. And what is the average of this 3 number? You will get 2. So output we need 6 and 2. So anyone can tell you how to write Anyone, can you tell me how to write the same program, how to write? Anyone, how to write by using the while loop? Anyone? So first we are asking the user to enter any number, okay? So we need some, okay? Now after that we are writing here while, while if n is not equal to 0, while if n is not equal to 0. Just you can see, if n is not equal to 0 means the user definitely will enter some other number. Okay, 0 means the stopping point. So here basically we are writing sum equal to sum plus n. And again we are asking the user to enter the value. Again we are asking the user to enter the value. Because we are working for the average, then in this case we need the counter also. That is used to count how many times the user has entered the value. So we are writing counter equal to counter plus you can see so what we are writing here just you can see what we are making here first we are finding the sum value and after that we are also counting how many times the user has entered the value and here we are writing why n is not equal to zero or you can also write y n or you can also write y n because if you are getting non-zero value that will consider as a true statement okay after that, we are printing some value and then we'll write sum divided by count because this both are your integers. So we have to make one as a float value. So now this one will work fine. So just you can see, we are going to execute, compile and run. We are entering 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Just you can see, 21, I did not print it. We have to write percentile D again, percentile D, now you can see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 
just you can see so in this case i think this is not printing the right value because it is printing something different value okay so we have to check why it is printing Very different value because here we have to write the percentile f percentile f and here we will write the percentile d so i think it will print you the right value just you can see one two three see it is printing the right value it is printing the right value clear so it is printing the right value 19 3.80 it is printing the right value okay now the next one i am going a little bit fast that is called the for loop okay just you can see after that we will stop so now in the for loop what we are writing here here we are going to define the variable so we are writing here definition then we are writing here condition and then here we are writing the update Try to understand. This is also very important. The same like your while loop. So what we are writing here for i equal to zero, i is smaller than n, i plus plus. Okay. Or you can write for expression one, expression two, expression three. Try to understand. What do you mean by that in the while loop? Okay. In the while loop, just you can see when you are using the while loop, whatever the variable you are going to use here. First, we are defining those variables. Just you can see, we are defining here variable. We are taking the value of n, and after that, we are taking here. So now you can see the same like that. If you are going to define the variable, you have to write here. This is the first expression basically used to define the variable. First expression basically used to define the variable. After that, we will write the condition. Okay. Then it will check the expression number two. So first, it will execute the expression number two. Then it will check the expression number two. Okay, if the expression number two is true, then it will execute whatever the statement you are going to write here. And after that, it will go to the expression number three. Then again, it will come to the expression number two. If the condition is true, again, it will execute this expression. What do you mean by that? Just you can see, first it will come to the expression number one. Then it will go to the expression number two. If this expression is true, then it will go to the statements. And after that, it again, it will come to the expression three. And then it will go to the expression two. And if this statement is false, it will come out from the loop. Okay. Just you can see. This is an important, very, very important point. Only one at time, it will execute this expression number one. Only one at time, it will execute the expression number one. Okay. After that, directly it will go to the expression number two. That is called the condition. If the condition is true, then it will execute this statement. Otherwise, it will not execute any statements. Try to understand. This is a very important point. Just you can see. After that, directly it will go to the statement number two or expression two. If the expression two is true, then it will go to the all the statement because we are writing the Brasses. We are writing the brasses. Okay. And after that, it will go to the expression number three. It will go to the expression number three. Okay. That again, it will come to the expression number two and it will check whether the condition is true or false. Whether the condition is true or false. Yes, definitely we have to define before that. Again, if the condition is true, then again it will execute this statement. Okay, so just you can see, only one at time we are going to execute this statement. This statement we are going to check second time, and this one we are going to check third time. Now, here, how to distinguish the expression using the semicolon means at least two semicolon must be present in your for loop. Exactly two semicolon must be present in your for loop. Okay. So the first, if you are writing here, first semicolon, this is expression one. If you are writing semi, second semicolon, then this is your expression two. After that, we are writing expression three. Means even if you are writing this one for semicolon, semicolon, this is also considered as a valid expression. This is also considered as a valid expression. If you are going to write something like that, int i equal to zero, and then we are writing semicolon, semicolon, this is also a valid expression. But if you are writing for int i equal to 10, and if you are writing only one semicolon, this is not considered as a valid expression. Exactly two semicolon, exactly two semicolon, exactly two, exactly means exactly two not one not greater than two not one and not greater than two 
okay not one not greater than two exactly two semi colon try to understand exactly two semi colon okay so if you are writing here something like that expression one comma just you can see expression one comma expression two semi colon expression three comma expression four and then you are writing the expression five there is no any problem there is no any problem if you are using yes you can use and you can use comma but the semi colon is exactly to only it will check the semicolon you will write any types of expression here you can use double and here you can use or here you can use plus minus anything but the semicolon must be two if we have the two semicolon then in this case there is no any syntax error present in the for loop there is no any syntax error present in the for loop clear so at for example just you can see we are writing here some for loop just you can see you yeah, are writing before that because in the dev c++ basically it is not going to support this one but you can write for int i equal to 0 we are writing i equal to 0 comma i equal to 10 comma i equal to something like that i equal to 20 there is no any problem semicolon i plus 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 i plus plus i something like that then semicolon there is no any problem with this code just you can see if you are going to compile you will not find any type of syntax error here but now assume that if you are not writing semicolon here then definitely you will find the syntax error just you can see because it will only check whether you have written the two semicolon or not exactly two semicolon or not okay so now we'll try to attempt the question i have already uploaded in the quiz quiz four just try to check this question quiz number four okay so just try to attempt okay and next class is very very important because in the next class you have to see that you also if you are not writing semicolon syntax error if you are not writing exactly two exactly two anyone can you tell me what do you mean by exactly two anyone can you tell me what do you mean by exactly two and what do you mean by at most two anyone what is the difference between at most two and exactly two anyone anyone at most two and exactly two. Anyone? At most two means zero, one, two. Exactly two means exactly two means exactly two. What I have mentioned? Exactly two. Okay. And next class is very, very, very important. If you are missing the next class, then it's become impossible to attempt for loop question in your mid sem exam as well as compre exam so next two class is most important related to the loop system if you are missing the class means you will miss like that 30 to 40 percent marks in your mid sem exam and compre exam okay so next two class is very very important because in the next class next two class we will check how many times this loop will execute so we will discuss about all the problems related to that okay and definitely two to three problems come in your compre exam makeup uh, then your mid sem exam as well as your placement or get exam okay sir is loops there in the portion for the thursday exam a loop means only the while loop, while loop is there, not the for loop. Okay. Okay. Now you can see we are writing the two semicolon. It will go for the infinite loop. If you are writing two semicolon, it will go for the infinite loop. We can use these types of loop for infinite expression. So no quiz today, sir. Yeah, quiz is there. I have already opened it. Just will attempt. Just will check. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Sir, we have a class at 10. If you have the class, you can leave. Do just to, because it will not take more than four to five minutes to solve this problem. Okay. And the class is going to start from 10 o'clock. So if you have the time, then you can attempt. Otherwise, it is also okay. We will discuss in the next class whatever the problem we have given in the quiz. Okay. So those students have the time, try to attempt this question. You can write the expression in any sequence. That is not a problem. That will come under the logical error. We are talking about the syntax error. I have already, just will check in the dev C++, I have already written I++ that normally we will write in the last expression. But you can write any types of expression. There is not a problem. 
Only you have to always remember it will execute like that. This is most important. That's why I have given this point. Only you will remember this point. If you have remember this point, you can solve all the problem. Only one time it will execute expression one. Second time it will go to the expression two. Then it will go to the statement. Then it, again it will come to expression three. Then expression two. It will continue this loop until this expression two is true. But you always remember only one time expression one is executed. Okay. So anyone? Anyone? At least you will tell me the answer for this question. Anyone? Can you tell me? Can you please tell me what is the answer we will get for this question? Anyone? How many times? First, it will execute this one printed bits. When it is going to execute printed bits, what value it will print? Bits. Then it will check the condition. I plus plus is smaller than 2. Condition is true or false? I plus plus is smaller than 2. Condition is true or false? Condition is true. But the value of I becomes 2. 1. Now again, it will go to the return 0. When we are writing return 0, but here you can see we are we have written here semicolon. Means the return 0 is not the part of this for loop. Then again, it will go to the third statement. Print Hadrawar. So it will print Hadrawar. Again, it will come to this one. I plus plus. The value of I becomes 1. Then this value again. So it will print 2 times Hadrawar. So I think B is the right answer. Bits Hadrawar. Hadrawar is the right answer. How many students have given the B answer? If you have given the B answer means... You can assume like that you have the command in for loop. Okay. And next class is very, very important. Just anyone, only this 11 students have given the responses. Sir, can you explain why two times Hyderabad will be true? Just you can see. Simple concept that I have already. First, it will execute the first expression because I have already mentioned expression one. When it is going to expression 1, what value it will print? Because you are using the print means it will print the value bits. bits. Okay. Now it will go to the condition i plus plus is smaller than 2. What is the value of i plus plus? 0. Value of the expression 0. But after that, what is the value of i become 1? Okay. 0 is smaller than 2. Condition is true. If the condition is true, then it will go for the statement. But there is no any statement inside this for loop. There is no any statement inside this for loop. <laughs> Just you can see, there is no any statements inside this for loop. So next, where it will go? Printf Hadrava. When it will go to the printf Hadrava, what value it will print? Again, it will come to the second condition. I plus plus is smaller than 2. Because in the previous iteration, the value of I become 1. 1 is smaller than 2. Condition is true. But the value of I become 2. If the condition is true, again, it will go to this statement. It will print Hadrava. When it will come to the next time, the value of I become 2. 2 is smaller than 2. Condition is false. If the condition is false, it will come out from the for loop. So it will print bits Hadrava, Hadrava. Okay. So in the next class, we will also discuss more detail. Some students are asking for question number two. Which one? This question? Which one? Which one Excuse you are me, sir. Yes. Sir, sir, you will discuss the quiz uh, in next class. Next class we will discuss. We will discuss the question. Okay, sir. So because I have a class, so I have to leave. Yeah, you, you can leave. You can leave. Okay, sir. Sir, in the mm -hmm. bits Hyderabad, uh, Hyderabad question, uh, in the second round, why is it directly coming to I++ plus plus less than 2? Why, why will it not print up Hyderabad once again? Uh, bits Hyderabad once again? Just you can see. This is the answer. How many times we are going to execute the expression 1? Sir, uh, sir. Only one, exactly one time. Just you can see, expression 1, only this part is coming under the loop, not the expression 1 is coming inside the loop. Sir, how to do fourth one? Richard. Sir, that how many bits printing? Uh, sir, yes, I, I have, I have uh, uh, only that one, sir, came wrong for me, but all, all the rest are correct. Sir, sir I, 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 here you can see we have written int i equal to 0. Yes, sir. 
Uh, so here you can see the value of i becomes zero. Now we have to check the value of i becomes zero. I is smaller than okay. Okay, this question we will discuss because it will only depend upon the condition number two because we are using the comma operator and yes, the comma, comma operator always executes from the left to right. So it will only depend upon the condition number two, not yeah. the condition. Sir, then why is thirteen the correct answer, sir? Because it starts zero. from zero. Starts from zero. That's why. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. So thirteen is the right answer, na? I have written thirteen. Okay, sir. Uh, do, do you have uh, two, two minutes time, sir? I ha I had a doubt about a mid sum question, mid last year mid sum question. Okay, that will dis that will discuss. First, we will try to attempt to complete this one. Which which? Yes, sir. I have done that. Okay. I submitted okay. also. Okay, just yeah. yeah. Ne next, uh -huh. what is your doubt? Mid sum question. What is your doubt? Please ask. Sir, uh, sir, it it, it is a, a program in which we have to find the output, sir. Uh, but uh. I had predicted one output. Then I, I when I typed it in the compiler, it's an in, infinite loop. So can I uh, can I dictate the program or can I uh, open my camera and show? Uh, 